I'm Harriet Vance Ball, Associate Professor of Medicine from McMaster University, and I'm delighted to have with me Dr. Rob Mentz, Associate Professor of Medicine from the Duke Clinical Research Institute. And we are here at HFA 2023 to discuss his late-breaking clinical trial, Paraglide. Welcome, Rob. Harriet, thank you so much. It's great to be with you. I'm so excited about your trial. Uh, it has the potential to be transformative in uh, heart failure care. Tell us about the knowledge gap that it fills. Great, thanks so much, Harriet. So Paraglide was really designed as a follow-up to help inform some of the gaps around Paragon HF. Right, so with Paraglide, we looked at Secubitril Valsartan versus Valsartan in heart failure patients, looking at ejection fraction greater than 40%. And importantly, they had a worsening heart failure event within the past 30 days. So it was either in the hospital or within 30 days. And we looked at biomarkers and clinical outcomes as, as we'll get into together. Fantastic. So this trial aimed to assess the effect of Secubitril Valsartan in patients who were hospitalized with a mildly reduced or preserved ejection fraction. What was your primary endpoint? So the primary endpoint was the change in NT pro BNP from baseline through weeks four and eight. So it was similar to the Pioneer HF trial. And you had a representative sample of patients in your trial, which we all aim for, but few achieve. Tell us about the baseline characteristics. This was one of the most important characteristics is we wanted this to be applicable to the patients we're seeing in routine care. So the age was right around 72 years, 52% women, 22% self-identified black individuals. And then the median ejection fraction was 55%. And we had these different groups, so that mildly reduced was about a quarter of patients. We had about half of the patients were between 50 to 60 for EF, and then greater than 60 for EF, we had another quarter there. Fantastic. Tell us about the intervention, how it was delivered, and the duration of the drug therapy. Great, thanks. So importantly, there was no run-in period here. So this was patients coming into the hospital or stabilized in the outpatient setting within 30 days. And it was Secubitril Valsartan versus Valsartan, titrated to those doses that we saw as in Paragon HF. And then we continued, remembering that that primary endpoint was at four and eight weeks, but we continued therapy and had a median follow-up of about six months. Okay, and what was your primary effect? Well, I'm delighted to share we met our primary endpoint. What we saw was a 15% greater reduction in NT pro BNP with Secubitril Valsartan as compared with Valsartan. Fantastic. And did you have any secondary endpoints? There were a number of important secondary endpoints. One was an endpoint looking assessed by a win ratio. So we looked at cardiovascular events, so cardiovascular death. We looked at heart failure hospitalizations, urgent heart failure visits, and NT pro BNP. And what we saw was that there was a win ratio of 1.19, or 19% more wins with Secubitril Valsartan as compared with Valsartan. It didn't meet the pre-specified level of statistical significance, but importantly, each of the components favored Secubitril Valsartan. And I'd like to share that in a pre-specified subgroup with EF below normal, we saw that that win ratio actually went to 1.46, or 46% more wins, and that actually did meet nominal statistical significance. So I think building on the story that we saw with Paragon, where this below normal EF group seems to have a larger treatment effect, and I'd quickly also state that we looked at renal endpoints, and we saw nearly a 40% reduction in renal events with Secubitril Valsartan as compared with Valsartan, and overall safe, but we did see more symptomatic hypotension. Okay, I was just going to ask about the uh, adverse effects. So how much uh, more symptomatic hypotension did patients experience? So what we saw was that it was actually 73% increase in terms of symptomatic hypotension, and that was documented by the PI. So it'll be important we'll take a deeper dive to better understand who were these patients that experienced the hypotension, what was the time course, and how can we best work to mitigate uh, those symptoms. But then I would also add that the other safety endpoints, we had another worsening renal function measure that was 40% lower. I see. And in addition, no difference in hyperkalemia between the two groups, and there was only one case of angioedema, and that was actually in the Valsartan group. Can you tell us in the context of the hypotension what threshold was used to exclude patients from the trial? Yeah, really important point. So building upon Paragon, we actually did go lower, so this was a systolic blood pressure down to 100. Okay. 
And as we look at some of the other features, a GFR all the way down to 20, so it really was a broader population with no run-in period. These are the patients we're seeing in practice, and I think we, we now have these important data around safety and efficacy. Sure. On the background of multiple clinical trials now that have demonstrated the efficacy of Sacubitril Valsartan across the EF spectrum in patients with heart failure, do you think we need an outcomes trial in this specific population, or do you think the question's been answered? It's a really important piece, and I'm delighted that we're actually going to share right after our presentation a pooled analysis with Paragon. Okay. So that'll bring all of this together, and I think this is the final piece of the puzzle to best inform how we manage our patients living with heart failure. Well, Rob Mentz, thank you for joining us and discussing the exciting results of the Paraglide trial. Thank you so much, Harriet.